This video will go over numbers 26 to 30 on your Algebra 1 Keystone Review packet. Leanne leaves town traveling at an average speed of 49 miles per hour. After four hours, Bart leaves town traveling in the same direction <clears throat> at an average speed of 67 miles per hour. So Leanne leaves first. Um, she has a four hour time start on, on Bart, and then Bart's leaving and he's going to go faster. So, what's going to happen? You know, eventually Bart is going to catch up to Leanne. Well, which of the following equations could be used to represent the distance y between Leanne and Bart after x hours? So, we're trying to find the distance between them. You really want to think about this problem and understanding the situation before you look at your options and before you try to choose the right answer. Let's think about what's happening to the distance over time, right? Okay, so here's where they start. So let's just kind of draw out a path where Leanne's going to be driving. Leanne's going to be going this way. Well, you know, and here's Bart right now at the beginning. After one hour, what's happening to the distance? Leanne's getting farther away. After two hours, farther away. After three hours, farther away. After four hours, farther away, right? So after four hours, how far is Leanne from Bart? Well, she's traveling. 49 miles per hour, so 49 miles per hour times, she's traveling for four hours before Bart even gets started. Let's figure out what that is. 49 times four is 196. So right now, at this point, Leanne is 196 miles from Bart, okay? After the first four hours, what's going to happen to their distance between each other? Well, after the fifth hour, right, Leanne would still be moving. So she would drive another 49 miles. But Bart would be catching up. He would be driving 67 miles. Then after another hour, again, they'd both be moving farther and farther down the line. So they would be getting closer together. So I'm starting with the distance being 196. My distance is going to start with that. Are they getting closer together or farther apart? Well, they're going to be getting closer together. So that distance is going to be less than 196 after the first four hours, right? They're going to get closer and closer and closer. So I'm going to take away from this 196. Let's, you could make a table and, and list out the times and list out how far they've gone. But let's think about this. Leanne's traveling 49 miles per hour. Bart's coming up on her. He's working his way. And Bart's traveling 67 miles per hour, right? So he's going to get closer and closer. How many miles is he gaining on her each hour? That's what you need to find. To find how many miles he's gaining, find the difference between these two speeds. 67 minus 49. This is going to tell you how many miles Bart is gaining on Leanne after each hour. 67 minus 49 is 18. So the distance is going to be between the two is going to be decreasing by 18 per hour that they travel. After the first four hours, they'll be getting closer and closer and closer. You could solve this equation then to find how many hours it would take for them to be at the same distance. But all you need to do is find the equation, so here your answer is D. Sometimes it helps to draw a picture, so maybe just think about that. I like using line segments um, to represent kind of where they are and where they're going to. 27. A company has a fixed operating cost. That means, you know, that cost is set. It doesn't matter how many they produce, they're always going to be paying that amount. So. Their operating costs are $2,137 per month with a production cost of $15.15 per unit. So this is a fixed fee of this and it's every month. And then this is a fee that they pay per unit that they produce. If each unit brings $33.09 in revenue, so this is coming in. This is coming in, this is a positive. Which of the following equations represent the profit y for the month? Okay, so the money that's coming in, the revenue, is a positive number. But you also have to think about what's going out. They're going to have to pay this fixed fee every month, and they're going to have to pay 
this cost per unit every month, okay? So remember that profit is equal to their revenue minus their costs. This is what we need to find. Okay, so we're trying to find an equation profit for y. So since profit's going to be y, I'm going to put y underneath profit. Put it down here. Equals. Well, we need to write something that represents their revenue. How much money are they making each month? Well, each unit brings in $33.09. So they're making $33.09 per unit. So we don't know how many units they're producing, but this can be represented by 33 Oh, 09 times since it's for each unit and there we're going to let x represent the number of units so times x now that all is in profit because they have to pay the cost and since they're paying the cost we're subtracting out whatever it costs to make it so you have to subtract a couple things here right i'm going to open up some parentheses the there were two costs given to you. There's a fixed cost, which is just once per month. And since this equation represents the profit for the month, this doesn't need to be multiplied by anything. It's just a fixed amount. Anytime you have a fixed amount, it should stand alone as a constant. But we're also going to have to pay out the $15.15 .15 per unit. So we're also going to pay out $15.15 .15 for each unit, so again, times x. Now, you could also write this just as minus 2,137 that's getting paid out, minus the 1515x that's getting paid out. That's the same thing. All we did was distribute the minus sign. Either way, this is what you're starting with. Now, if you don't see that equation as your options, think about what you can do. We have two like terms that can be combined, so add, actually really subtract, take 3309x and take away 1515x, right, which you would get from that. We're going to be left with y equals 1794x minus 2137. Another word problem. You're going to have a lot of word problems to practice here. So if you struggle with these word problems, make sure you listen to these videos. Ask your teachers if you have questions. Anne is moving from Houston to McKinney and rented a truck from you Move Truck Rentals. The cost of a one-day truck rental is given by the cost of M equals 0.5M plus 50, where M is the number of miles driven. So this, if you forget, is a function notation notation. All it's saying is the cost of miles. It's not being multiplied, it's just saying the cost when you put in miles. Remember that this is just your independent variable. Okay, so the cost depends on the miles. Our independent variable is miles. If Ann drives 280 miles, what is the cost of the truck rental? So since this is the miles, you're just going to put that in for M. If you made a mistake, you might have thought this was multiplication on this side. Remember the function notation is just read as the cost of 280 miles. So this doesn't need, this is really just a label. We're saying what is the cost of 280 miles? Well, put in 280 for M. All you have to do is simplify this part. This is a label again. So the cost of 280 miles is what? Simplify the right side. 0.5 times 280, well, half of 280 is 140, plus the 50. So the cost of 280 miles is $190. Your answer here is B. Remember the function notation. Functions are Chapter 4 in your whole algebra textbook. Um, so this, this is not C times 280. Again, this is the cost of 280 miles. All right, 29, really you don't have to solve anything. You just need to describe what's happening. I, pref I always recommend that you look at the problem first, come up with some ideas, then look at the options. So one of the steps Jamie used to solve an equation is shown below. Which statement describes the procedure Jamie used in this step and identifies the property that justifies this? Before you look at A through D, look at the problem. See what he did. So negative 5 is on the outside of the parentheses. What would you do? 
Well, somehow he got a negative 15x. What did he do? He multiplied negative 5 times this. Somehow he got a, a negative 35. What did he do? He multiplied negative 5 times the positive 7. What is that called? When you take a number on the outside of parentheses and you multiply it by everything that's on the inside, that is the distributive property. So before you look at your options, I'd be thinking, you're probably going to look for the word distribute. Think about what operation you did. Maybe write that down too. So again, we said he multiplied negative 5 by the inside of the parentheses. Now that you have an idea, let's look at your options and see what matches this. Well, well, you already said that he multiplied, so you can probably rule out A and B because they say added. C says multiplied, D says multiplied, and they have different properties. So let's read them and see which one makes sense. Jamie multiplied 3x and 7 by negative 5 to eliminate the parentheses. This procedure is, called, is justified by the associative property. We already said it was the distributive property. The associative property is the property that allows you to regroup numbers. So it has to be D because he's multiplying and he's using the distributive property. Okay, and if you're looking at question 30 and you struggle, we're going to go through this equation. So solve for X. I would start by doing what we just talked about on the last problem. Distribute the 7. So I would have 7 times 2X is 14X. 7 times a minus 8 is a minus 56. Make sure you have a negative sign there, a minus or a negative, but only one of them, equals 77x. Solve to get to solve, you need to get your x's together on one side of the equation. I always like to take them to the side that has more. So there's 77x's over here. Let's get this one over there with it. I can't just move it. I need to undo what I have. Now remember, this minus sign goes with this 56. So the 14x is a positive 14x. That's how I know to subtract. On the left, the 14x is canceled, and I'm left with negative 56. On the right, I have 77x minus 14x, or 63x. Divide by 63 to undo what's being done to x. And we can reduce this fraction. So if you divide on your calculator, you're going to get a decimal. What can you take out of both of these? I can take out a 7. So negative 56 divided by 7 is a negative 8. 63 divided by 7 is a 9. So you get negative 8 ninths. Now if you used your calculator and you had a decimal there, you could then plug these in on your calculator and see which decimal gets you the see which fraction gets you the same decimal, okay? So if you did not simplify, type these in and see which one matches the decimal that you had on your calculator. If you have any questions, please see your teacher about these problems.